The Pentagon says that this video here appearing to show a UFO is in fact real. Well, U.S. Navy pilot uh, recorded the pyramid-shaped object. Now, it's not clear when or where this was shot. But right now, a government task force is gathering photographs and also videos of UFO encounters. Then that group is releasing a comprehensive report for Congress in June. All right, Shalom. All praise goes to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Bashim Kodash. Double honors goes to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, from whom I learned the truth. And much love and peace and blessings goes out to all you hopeful elect brothers that are teaching the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh So this will be a lesson regarding a UFO update as far as what's happening with these UFO, uh, so-called UFOs. Which, if you're in the know, if you're a believer, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh you know that. <coughs> Uh, the chariots, all these UFOs that are being talked about and reported are actually the vehicles of who the world ignorantly calls God, right? And his son, who they call Jesus Christ, is, uh, of course, directing the angels is what they're, how they're moving across the earth. But also, he's coming back on a, on a giant, <laughs> impossible to notice UFO. See, and that's what the Pentagon knows. That's what the elite of Esau, Edom knows. That's what the Navy knows. They all know this. But, you know, of, and the way I, I, I've been meditating on this recently is why is Esau, you know, there's been hundreds to thousands to even hundreds of thousands of UFO sightings in America for the past 50 or 60 years. One of the most famous being when um, I believe this was in the 1950s when there were several UFOs that um, appeared over the White House and they thought it was an alien invasion at that time, right? So this has been going on all this time, but we see here now in the past two, three years, but especially in the past year, how they are openly talking about it now. And they're getting people familiar with this information, right? All these zombies, which they don't, you know, when you speak to the average person, even though this shit, this is being talked about on mainstream news, but no one is talking to each other about it because they're gone, they're zombies. But the thing about it is, I believe that Esau Edom is conditioning the people to believe that these are, uh, you know, some type of otherworldly threat of aliens or some shit that they should be that, sh that they should fight against. Because, like I said, they ultimately know Yahweh Yahweh Shai is um is um coming back and he's uh, using the the UFOs as we speak. But he can't put it out there that these are the, you know, of course, the the chariots of the creator of the universe. Right. So he he has to uh, demonize, you know, that's why he's created a space force and all these other things, you know. So with that, I'm going to get into the scriptures, because ultimately we know what's going to happen according to prophecy. So this is the book of Zechariah, chapter five and verse one, it says, then I looked and lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a flying roll. And if you look up that word for roll, it's a it's um basically a book, right? The same word used for um a scroll, right? It's a uh, magala, a roll, a volume, a book, a writing, right? And the reason why the scriptures use this word is because it is um basically synonymous with how the chariots move. They move in a rolling formation in this, in this similar uh, to its shape. All right. Ancient Torah. Right. Like this, this shape, if you will. Look at this. A scroll bound up. Because if you could turn this sideways, it would actually be of a similar shape to what the so-called UFOs look like, man. All right? Because if you look up UFO, that elongated pill-like shape. And you got chariots that look, um, that come in other forms, but this just so happened to be the shape of one that, um, that uh, Zechariah seen. You see? So that's that's what it means when it says the flying roll. Because, you know, scrolls don't, when you look in the sky, you don't see it. A flying book, you know, this is these are the vehicles of the angels. So it says, um, 
And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is twenty cubits, and the breadth thereof ten cubits. Then he said unto me, that that's going into the measurements of this thing. It says, Then said he to me, This is the curse. Right? So the chariots are a curse. They are a detriment. And it, said, it goes on to explain to who, but I want to get that word for curse. The, cur the word for curse is Allah, an, impre an imprecation, a curse, a cursing, ex execration, an oath, a swearing, an oath or a curse from God. And that's what these are. It comes from Allah to curse, to swear. All right. So it says, this is the curse that go forth over the face of the whole earth. And that's why they're being seen everywhere. But especially in America, it says for everyone that stilleth. And who is he that stilleth? Esau, Edom, the, the so-called white man. He's stolen the Lord's chosen people and took all their lands, confiscated their resources and gave it to himself. It says shall be cut off as on this side, according to it. So meaning out of the sides of the chariots, they're going to will something that's able to cut you off. And what would that be? Laser beams, weapons, <laughs> their weapons, they're going to be used to, to destroy. It says, and everyone that swears shall be cut off as on this, that side, according to it. I will bring it forth, said the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that swear falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house. And shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. So the Lord is telling you right here what the objective <laughs> of the chariots are. So that's why these devils are shaking in their boots because he they know that uh, the so-called UFOs are, are are basically for not for their good, you know. So this is uh, and the scriptures detail how Yahweh Shai is coming back, which we're gonna get. This is a uh, Mark fourteen. And 62. And Yahweh Shah said, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. See? So that's letting you know Yahweh Shah's return is going to be associated with something that is uh in in the in the in the in the heaven, something that you look up and see. And that's gonna be the so-called um UFOs, you know. So let's go to Acts. Chapter 1 and verse 9, it says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. So that cloud that received up Yahweh Shai was a, was a so-called UFO, man. And that's what these people don't really understand. They don't understand that. Because when you ask, you can ask any Christian, man, you can ask majority of people of the world, impose upon them Acts first chapter and verse nine. They ain't going to know. They ain't going to know what that cloud is. They'll think it's a literal cloud that he somehow disappeared into. No, it wasn't. The scriptures use clouds because just like clouds are on high in the heavens, that particular vehicle was was in the midst. It was in the clouds. You see, it says. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Which also said, and these two men in white apparel, these were two angels. And they were so-called black men. They were dark-skinned men with glorious apparel. They had white robes, you know, and they looked <laughs> spiffy. It says, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. You see? So he's going to, the same way Yahweh Shai departed at this very time, this was over 2,000 years ago, is the very same way he's going to return. And if by process of elimination of all the things you see going on right now, what is more likely to be synonymous with the return of Yahweh Shai? A cloud that you just see in heaven? Fighter jets? A literal uh, flying horse, a dragon, you know, 
but we see the evidence. We see the UFOs manifesting themselves. So that's a prelude to what's about to happen. How our Lord is going to return. And the Lord, is that's especially for us. That's, you know, it's to confirm our faith. First and foremost, but it's also to let these heathens know what time it is. Yahweh Shai is not playing games. He's coming to return for his remnant. And he's coming to make war. You know, because he's not just going to save us. He's going to destroy the heathens and their armies. So this is Revelation chapter uh, 19. In verse 11, it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And that white horse represents Yahweh Shai's power, his majesty. Because when, when one sits upon a horse, that represents him being, uh, ex one, you being exalted with power. And the same word for horse is of the root of the same word for chariot. I believe it's kabad or kawabad, right? It says, And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. So this 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 is a scripture of a, of a of a direct threat to those who rule. Why? Right? Because they rule in wickedness. So if the force of righteousness is coming, that's a threat to them. It says, "His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns." Letting you know that was talking about the Son of Man. His many crowns, because he will take the, the 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 jurisdiction and the government from these nations. It says, "And he had a name written." That no man knew, but he himself. Okay, it says, and, and that new name is the refreshed name, Yahweh Shai, and he was clothed with a vesture dip, dipped in blood. Why is it dipped in blood? Because at this very same time, when he appears on the earth, many death, he's gonna be killing a lot of people. Yahweh Shai is gonna point and say, destroy him, destroy her, destroy all of them, destroy that whole hundred crowd of people kill them you see so that's why it says and his name is called the word of the most high and the armies which were in heaven followed upon him and followed him upon white horses so those th these so-called ufos that we see these are the armies right this is the army of yahweh bashim yahweh shai so brothers you gotta understand <laughs> we got help <laughs> You know, Esau has his army. We have our army as well. Of course, we have the brethren. We have the spiritual army. But as far as our defense, we have that. We have a deterrent element that can that will uh, prevent these devils from having their way with us. We have a defense. And we have that 24-7. The angels are all around us. They're not just in the skies. They're on earth right now. They're around us. They're sitting next to you, standing by you watching and protecting okay it says and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with the rod of iron and he shall and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of all of almighty god and why is it the wrath because yahweh shah is coming to execute the anger of the lord He's coming to alleviate his father's anger upon the heathen because the heavenly father and all the angels in yahweh shah have seen the sickness and the evil and the wickedness which amounts to being against the scriptures that's happening in the earth right now. So they see that and when Yahweh Shah comes back, it's go time. All right. No talking. See, the talking is happening through the prophets. When Yahweh Shah comes back, it's no talking. When he comes back, he's coming back for war and with a mean face. All right. So all praise goes to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Shalom.